Hello everyone. Today I'm going to have an interview with my school principal. I was always her big fan and wanted to have an interview with her. And today I got that day. I always remember she used to tell us, "Good, better, best. I may never rest when good be better and better be best." So I welcome Miss Miraj Humayun Khan. Tell us about yourself. Rubab, my life began in a small village called Genda in district Sawadi. And I spent seven years over, over there. Then we shifted to Abdabad for education, purpose of education. I had did my primary level from there and then the rest of my schooling till metric was in the convent schools. Uh, then I joined Home Economics College in Peshawar, from where I did BS, and then later on Masters in English and uh, uh, Masters in Education, and a Diploma in French Language, all from uh, Peshawar. I taught in Peshawar Convent for 13 years, and then seven years I was with the UN, uh, working for World Food Program with the Afghan refugees, and after that uh, I started my own school, Miraj Private Academy. I got the inspiration from the nuns in the convent who taught me and where I taught myself also uh, later on. So that school uh, you know very well because you also studied over there. You know the system of education I had introduced and what my dreams for all of you were. Along with this uh, school I had started much earlier than the school. I had started my own social work and I had registered uh, an NGO in 1988 by the name of the Las Gul. The purpose and the objective of the NGO was to spread education, especially in the rural areas, to the uh, low-income uh, uh, ch ch children, children belonging to low-income groups. That NGO is still functioning. I'm the uh, chief executive, the founder and the chief executive. Uh, later on, I sold my Raj Academy, the school that you studied in, and all of you have been asking and wondering why I did that. And the reason was that I had taken a lot of loan for some personal problems and also for construction uh, and paying for the land and also I was really in the thick uh, where financial condition was concerned. So I had to uh, sell, sell it and also I needed time to work for the NGO. I thought you people belong to affluent families and you could have be taken care of by anybody. But those poor children in the village who were had started the tart schools, small community schools, I thought I was needed much more by them. So that's why uh, I uh, entered into a partnership with Ms. Salma Masood. Anyway, that, that, that was it. But I've moved into, I mean, the last school has moved in different directions and we've come to be known as pioneers for uh, uh, new initiatives. Uh, one was the home-based schools, which I started in Sawabi and uh, Fabri Agency. And those were simple schools, like I said, where we engaged one teacher from the community and 30 uh, students, girls, all girls. And the other one was a, a child labor project, which was taking children from the streets, making them stop uh, uh, beggary and also working with the uh, people who employed uh, children, uh, raising awareness that children need to go to school instead of uh, working and if even if they are forced to because of poverty, they have to be taken care of the uh, owners and the masters who engage them, they have to see to it that children don't suffer their working uh, hours were not too many, etc. And they had protective covers if they were working in workshops and 
the environment was uh, uh, not no, not too harsh for li for little uh, children and uh, uh, along with that uh, some other uh, initiatives that we continue to work so i as a person i think i'm, I'm a pioneer uh, i've got ideas god has given me the, uh, this capacity it's all coming from allah that i can start schools and i can uh, introduce uh, new things and new ideas uh, after miraj academy i also started a school in sohabi by the name of uh, miraj school simply miraj school and now currently there is this miraj alumni uh, schooling system uh, i uh, in the in the college in home economics college i was elected representative of the class and i was uh, uh then the vice president of the student union so one can say that my political career started from college uh, days although i did not think of it as a political career at that time uh, but uh, later on my uncle was in politics so i was going around with him he was an amp i had not joined the party but since i was here uh, there with them so one can say that i had a little bit of experience of the amp and uh, uh, then in 1996 when pti was formed by mr imran khan i joined that and i was the first president of the women wing but uh, differences uh, rose with uh, mr imran khan because he removed me and uh, the male president both of us without explaining why and he brought in two new people who had not even joined the party as yet so then i uh, just uh, uh, told the new chief that i would continue the, my social life uh, by which by then had uh, really developed and i was taking a lot of interest in it and i was occupied full time in it but then aftab khan uh, aftab khan sherpa he invited me to join his party which was in those days called uh, 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 pakistan people's party sherpa but when i joined and we started in a group we started convincing mr shepo that we should drop this and we should change the name uh, because we don't want to be uh, mixed up with the main people's party we had our own identity and we had our own plans and our own goals so we changed that into common watan party the name is yeah so i played quite an important role uh, there and uh, aftab khan was very very encouraging and very supportive Uh, he, he gave me also a ticket to the um, provincial assembly which i got after the hard work of mr uh, sherpa uh, because we had one only seven seats and one was needed before i could get in into it so but uh, thank god i did get so five years i was in the uh, provincial assembly from 13 2013 to 18 and there the uh, initiative that i took and something that i feel good about was to create a caucus making making all the 22 members from the government side as well as the opposition come together to one table so that we could f- fight for ourselves i mean we had a difficult time just like women have a, a difficult time outside they're considered second rate and second not as important as the men the control the power is all with the men so in the assembly also uh, we were uh, not taken very seriously because we were told that you've come on the special seats and you don't deserve time and you don't deserve attention and you don't deserve funds and everything i mean whatever they could uh, think of so individually we couldn't raise and our voice was not uh, given much uh, heed but when we got together as 22 members and the caucus then uh, our importance grew and we also felt uh, strengthened so i'm very happy about, about that i've written a book on my experience uh, uh, in the provincial assembly which is uh, uh, called my brief political romance and it uh, mentions from day one uh, what i noticed what i observed and what i did as a, a member so that uh, is a, a good achievement uh, i think because i've developed over the years i developed a love for writing you uh, read my uh, posts on uh, uh, facebook which i take as a big classroom for me just like i used to teach uh, to you all or, uh, 
so Facebook is for me, the social media is for me like uh, that. I can express my thoughts and I can share and I'll try to educate uh, people uh, through my uh, brief writings that I uh, post every now and then. I'd also written a book about my mother and my uh, village, uh, which I just distributed to my family because I thought it's only of uh, importance uh, to them. I was a good sports person as a captain of the netball team and the vice captain of the volleyball team in, in, in the college. I love music. I love uh, dancing. I read a lot. I write a prolific uh, uh, reader. I enjoy reading. I enjoy the company of the youth and the uh, little children. So as a teacher, when I was in the convent, uh, I would spend two years teaching the kindergarten and three years in uh, class 10 teaching uh, uh, the adolescents. And I enjoyed the experience of both. I have leadership qualities. I am a, a leader and I try to guide and I try to develop leadership among the people I uh, have. I've got a good team of people in my village in Sawabi, in Peshawar, uh, at home. I'm very comfortable because my uh, helpers have stayed with me for a very, very long time. I'm very grateful to you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much. How would you describe your leadership style? I'm very sensitive to the development needs of the people who work for me, the youth especially. I am exacting and I can get uh, impatient because I'm a perfectionist and I want the last detail of any uh, program that we are organizing or arranging or running. I want it to be perfect to the last letter, to the last detail. So that way I can be a tough task master and uh, uh, making really uh, my team uh, work very very hard but thank god i mean they s stick around they see that i'm doing it for their own good and uh, they learn uh, learn quite a bit it was this uh, teaching career that i've had and the god-given skill that i have that helps that helps uh, them to learn fast and learn more than they would in any other place Describe your vision of what a truly effective elementary, middle, high school would look like. Because without it, life is incomplete. It's uh, not. It's also the process that uh, bring, brings you near to God. It should bring you near to Allah because you understand uh, the universe that He has created. You don't understand it fully, of course, but you try to uncover. Uh, the, the facts and fiction and uh, what you see around you and you try to understand also the purpose uh, of the creation of the universe and your place in that universe. As uh, Ibn Arabi said, Allah uh, created the universe on one side and the Quran on the other side and it's uh, the, uh, a man or uh, the human is in between and the task for interpreting both is given to to us the people we try to decide decipher the holy quran in order to understand the universe and we look at the universe trying to understand what it tells us what lessons it give us gives us so both are that and education is that process i mean through education through the book through reading and writing we can uh, and understand the Quran as well as understand the God's working as the creator, as the uh, sustainer. A good school, a good school has to keep all this this in mind. I mean, it's it's not a temporary uh, classroom attendance and a lecture and uh, finishing the course, finishing uh, the syllabus. It's life. It's life. As soon as a child comes to the primary, to the uh, nursery playgroup. He is a sort of stepping into a, a strange world which is much bigger, unfamiliar. Uh, he or she is coming out, leaving parents, uh, leaving a familiar home. You know. 
So the first thing uh, that uh, teachers in the primary have to realize that the child is taking a big step to come out. It's a very, very, very big uh, decision uh, for, for him. This range is too much at, at that stage. So education, the content has to be such that it is familiar, it is known, it is linked with what the child experiences and uh, he, sh he, sh he should take it happily, he should understand it happily and, uh, and feel connect connected. So the passion has to be there, the love for children has to be there, the environment has to be very friendly, uh, very cozy. Uh, of the level that children can understand and feel at home with. It. If it's a, an adult world, they will not be able to settle in nicely mm -hmm. because uh, children are afraid of uh, adults. They, they take time before they uh, 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 make friends uh, with adults. But with their own contemporaries, with their own peers, they learn. So it should be more peer learning, group work, uh, uh, play way uh, method uh, throughout, and totally child-centered totally child centered and exper experiments research and all i've named i named my schools now Viraj. the first one where which you attended was after me it was okay myself my name was miraj but later on i realized that miraj has got a significance which is much much bigger miraj is the journey of the prophet uh, when allah called him so and that journey was for what purpose? Allah was educating him. Allah was sharing ilm with the Prophet. So Miraj is always a search for ilm, for new uh, experiences, for new knowledge. And this is what, what uh, schools should en ensure at all levels. The middle the same. Essentially, basically, it is all the same. Uh, schools must realize that the child is very important. The person is more important than the content that you are teaching. So finishing a course is not the aim. Making the student settle down in an environment which, which he and she can understand and feel at one with, at home with. If that happens, then that student himself or herself will try try to uh, uh, experiment, explore, and education is all about that. You read books in order to pick words, in order to pick expressions, in order to pick ideas, uh, so that your own ideas grow, your own uh, uh, universe or canvas for thinking or painting with words and uh, writing and all that uh, gets bigger. You look at uh, the uh, greenery around you and you try to uh, work out uh, your uh, biology lesson, your botany lessons. You look at the insects and you wonder how they breathe, how they live. How they live. And you say Alhamdulillah and you say Subhanallah because a small insect, a small bug has got all the essential uh, uh, organs or system just like a human of my size, your size or even bigger uh, than us as, as. so Allah has spent a lot of time of love with it. Education should develop love. Education should engender love. Uh, if we create hatred for, um, for work, hatred for learning, then we are failing. Uh, so it should be uh, one aim of uh, education at the middle school and high school, I mean from childhood, should be that uh, students uh, uh, get into that mode that they want to. Uh, when the, a teacher explains one lesson and out of that lesson the students can find uh, uh, other ideas that they would like to work on. Uh, I mean, I am telling now my students, I am trying to prepare my students of Sawabi that they will not live in Sawabi all their life. So they have to start learning so that they can adjust into the environment that uh, prevails in uh, Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad and even beyond uh, those, those cities, those big uh, cities. So uh, I, I feel, I feel uh, that. 
there has to be there has to be a lot of I mean we expect what I'm saying is uh, all expectations from the faculty members from the teachers but schools have to ensure that the place belongs an educational institution belongs to students first and then the faculty members the teachers and the parents so all three groups have to work together they have to come together there has to be no clash between the faculty and the parents what the child or the student does at home must be known to the school and what happens in the school must be known to the parents so collectively if there are issues they can collectively solve those issues or they can identify identify ways where they can uh, uh, release the potential uh, of the uh, of their child in a better way or in a faster uh, uh, way so that uh, has to be there and uh, and uh, faculty have, has to be, be helped by giving them a, a lot of resources so that they are not running here and there and you as you ask them to uh, use different methodologies but they don't know how there are no computers around and you ask them to uh, uh, use uh, uh, technology in class if there's no multimedia around, how can they do that? If they're not getting training in the use of technology, then expecting them to do that is uh, would be a bit unfair. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Uh, this is almost uh, uh, the length that you would require, and I'll continue, hopefully. Thank you. How do you see the teacher's role in the learning process? Teacher is a pillar in the schooling system around which the life of the student revolves. She is the link between the school and the home. She is also the link between the past and the present and the present and the future of her students. She is the holder of the keys which open the doors to multiple and diverse worlds of knowledge. She is one of the most important persons in, in, in the institution and she must receive that respect, that honor, that attention and care which she deserves. Very sensitive to the development needs of the people who work for me, the youth especially. I am exacting and I can get uh, impatient because I'm a perfectionist and I want the last detail of any uh, program that we are organizing or arranging or running. I want it to be perfect to the last letter, to the last detail. So that way I can be a tough task master and uh, uh, making really uh, my team uh, work very, very hard. But thank God, I mean, they s stick around. They see that I'm doing it for their own good and uh, they learn, uh, learn quite a bit. It was this uh, teaching career that I've had, and the God-given skill that I have that helps that helps them to learn fast and learn more than they would in any other place. If you could describe an effective school principal in just few words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, Ruba. As you have asked me about uh, qualities of a, a good principal, first of all, she must be passionate about uh, education and she must love, uh, love people. She must love children and the youth. And third is knowledge and search, uh, search for knowledge, adding uh, to her existing experiences and her uh, existing qualification, always in search, always wanting to know more. 
your message to the youth? My message to the students and to the youth is simple. Their goal in life should be study and learn. Talk to people, read books, travel nearby if not too far and have a goal. A goal which you should keep on assessing every day. Assess the work that you have done, assess how you have spent your day and uh, uh, make sure that you are going towards your goal and not being distracted here and there. And of course the goal is service to humanity, service in the name of Allah, and remembering Allah, your niyat, whatever you start, that has to be linked up with Allah's, uh, uh, Allah's uh, ihkamat and Allah's orders uh, for us. Everything is that we do should be pleasing to Allah and not get us into trouble with our Creator.